Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to show you how to perform a USB BIOS flash on the MSI Mag B650 Carbon Wi Fi. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a BIOS flashback using just a simple USB stick on your MSI B650 Carbon Wi Fi. This is one of those videos where I know at some point someone's going to be wanting to do it. I've done this for various other models, so it is a very similar process. Although this particular model has a specific change, which has made things a little bit more confusing and a little bit more difficult. So I've done a little bit of research so that hopefully you guys out there won't need to. Now it's a very simple thing actually on the board itself. On the back, you have your USB ports. And normally on a motherboard, you'd have a clearly designated port, which would be the one you put your USB stick into. But on this particular model, now whether or not this is something to do with a production run and they've forgotten to print it or whatever, maybe your board is different. Let me know in the comments. I'll be very interested to hear. But this one actually doesn't state anywhere which port is the one you're supposed to use. Now, looking actually on the website, which you'll see a flash up of now, you'll see that it does clearly say that it's this one here in the top. So obviously when you're doing it, make sure you're using this port. But like you can probably see already, if we zoom in, there is no markings on this whatsoever. So that is probably one of those things that you're gonna want this video for purely just to work out which one of the ports you actually have to use. So if that is all you've come for, hopefully this has helped you and uh, hopefully your flash goes well. But for the rest of you that want a little bit more hand holding and wanna go through the whole process, let's get stuck in. So what we're gonna to need to perform this, first of all, you're gonna need a working computer with access to the internet, such as our stream PC behind, which is what we'll be using in this instance. You will need a USB flash drive, which is 32 gigabytes or less. Also, it will need to be formatted in the FAT32 file system. So if there's anything on there, you're gonna have to get rid of it, gonna have to format it, etc. You will also need a power supply and you will need two connections on your power supply, which is the eight pin power connector or EPS connection as it's known, which goes in the top left-hand corner of your motherboard and also your 24 pin main power connector. Obviously, if your power supply has others, just don't bother connecting them, but those are the two that you will definitely need. Also, ideally, you want somewhere stable to put the actual motherboard on, so again, damaged or static, etc. I'm gonna be using the motherboard box, but you can pretty much use whatever you want, as long as it is uh, obviously safe and not gonna topple over. The worst thing that can happen when you're doing this is for the power to go out, because obviously, it's just gonna be time consuming. The beauty of the BIOS flashback is if you do manage to completely destroy your BIOS, you can generally always recover it by using the flashback utility. So with all that said, let's get on with it. And um, first of all, we're gonna get the drive ready and also download the file to actually flash to our motherboard. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll plug in our USB stick into the computer. This one does appear to be completely empty anyway. So that is excellent. Obviously, if yours isn't, you will need to format it and to format it, very easy to do, right click on the drive, choose format, make sure it's set to FAT32, not NTFS or XFAT, anything like that, it's gotta be FAT32. Allocation size, you can set to default, and ideally if there's a volume label, remove it. Click on start, and it'll give you the warning saying that it's gonna be erased, click okay, and format is complete. So that is the drive ready and waiting. Next thing to do, we need to get our BIOS file. So let's head over to the MSI website, which uh, there'll be a link in the video description. This is the overview. Obviously, if you're not sure if this is the board you've got, do a quick visual, make sure it is the correct one. When you're happy, click on support, and generally it'll go straight into drivers and downloads, of which BIOS is at the very top. So currently, our board, I believe, has the original release, which is this one here. There's also this one here, which is version 11, and also there's 13.1 beta which has the new AGISA update for the 1.0.0.4 update. Uh, this is a little bit problematic on the 7600X or any of the processors that have got a dual CCD, but one is disabled because it basically tries to use one of the disabled CCDs. Anyway, long story short, if you're not too sure, go with the latest full release. Depending when you're watching this, you may find there's newer versions available. If there is, just go with the newer version. So. I'm gonna go with the beta version just to uh, be pedantic. So click on download. And then you can choose where to save it to. I'm gonna save it to our Windows desktop. So we'll just choose desktop there. Click save. And then we can minimize this window. 
and you'll see there is our zipped file. Very important, you must unzip this, so right click and choose extract all. It'll give you the option of where you want to extract it to. I'm just gonna extract it straight here to the desktop. So now we've got our folder with our BAS file inside, so let's go into there. There'll be a text file telling you about the file and also the file size should be 32,768 kilobytes. If it's anything different than that, then you've done something wrong and go back a few steps. Now something we do have to do is we have to rename the file. So make sure in the section for options here that you have the option for view and show hidden files and folders and all that kind of stuff. But the one you want there is hide extensions for known file types to be removed or disabled, etc. So you can basically make changes and see your file extensions. So if you can't see your file extensions, make sure you change the settings so you can see those. So what we want to do is to actually rename this file. So just click on it, it says highlighted, and delete everything, and just change the file name to msi.rom, as we have done previously with the AM4 setups, same principle. So I'm just gonna do that, click enter. You'll get the message saying if you want to change a file extension, it may become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Yes, we are. So now we've got a ROM file and it is the right size. So now we can right click, choose copy, head down to our USB drive, right click and choose paste. However you copy and paste it is entirely up to you. So that is our drive ready. So now we can eject the drive from system and go over and get the motherboard set up. Okay, so now we can get our motherboard set up. So I'm going to put the motherboard on the box, keep things safe and we're gonna get our power supply. I'm gonna plug in, first of all, the eight pin EPS at the top. There's two 8-pin connectors on there. It doesn't make any difference at all which one you plug it into. So do whichever one is actually easier for you. With the 24-pin, obviously there's only one slot on the board. So that is on the other side. So plug that in. Make sure that is firmly in position, which that appears to be. And now we can run some power to the actual power supply. Next up, we're gonna plug in our USB drive. So this is our pre-prepared USB drive. And don't forget which port it goes into if yours isn't marked up like mine. So your first bank of USB ports there, it's the very top one. So plug that in. Now we're pretty much ready. So we turn on our power supply. And when we're ready, all we need to do is to just press and hold the BIOS flashback button. So you've got two buttons here. One of them is your CMOS reset and the other one is your flash BIOS button. So I'm just gonna press and hold that, about two or three seconds, and then release it. And you should see the Dragon logo has lit up on the motherboard, and you probably have some LEDs on the diagnostics as well. And we should see now that the LEDs on the back there are flashing. So basically, that is the flashing LED there. Just keep an eye on that. Basically, when it's done, it should take about two to three minutes. When it's done, the system will probably shut down, reboot itself. You may find that your power supply fan is spinning at present. Ours isn't, but it's because it's a thermally controlled one and it's pretty cool in here anyway, so probably doesn't need doing. So uh, I'll give you a close-up of the LEDs on the back and then we'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so you probably heard then the power supply clicked off and clicked back on again and the LEDs briefly went out. Our USB BIOS flashback button has now extinguished or is no longer illuminated and we've normally got our CMOS reset which is illuminated. So that is it. At this point now we can now turn the system off in its entirety. If you're not too sure how to do that, it's pretty straightforward. You're just going to have to reach over to your power supply and click and turn it all off so then you can carry on rebuilding the rest of your system. So there you go, pretty simple, pretty straightforward to do and looking at my watch that was somewhere in the region of about four to five minutes if yours has taken considerably longer than that, so in excess of 10 minutes something has gone wrong and it's not worked properly. You will also get there is a kind of like a diagnostic thing built into the LED flash so if the light flashes maybe three times or anything up to six times that is a warning to say that it's trying to read the file, but it can't. So you may want to change out your USB stick for another brand or another model, or maybe even just reformat it again to be on the safe side. Uh, I get a lot of 
uh, good results with these. These are the SanDisk Flare 32 gigabytes. I'll link these in the video description. Always worth having one of these on hand for BOSS flashbacks. And BOSS flashbacks are going to be a thing that is going to be pretty much throughout all motherboards now going forward from 2023 onwards. So yeah, definitely worth having one, especially one you can rely on. So there you go. Any other comments or questions, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. Uh, if you want to see more content on this on a daily basis, then hit the subscribe button and the chime notification. You may be of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.